So good morning. I do not know whether there are people here who want to ask questions, but today is all about questions. So you'll see, see our presentation go up, but uh, we want you to lead the way today. So whatever questions you've got, let's hear them. I'm ready to go out. I have to, I have to vacuum my house today because we have friends coming over and we can't let them see what uh, a pandemic gardener's house looks like. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, come on. But, we, but I'm going we out. Do, we do have a hand up from Michelle. Go for it, Michelle. Working on it there. No. Okay, and okay finally. Um, yeah, uh, regarding the, the weeds, you know, when you pull up or you dig up like with a fork, a thistle and, or a, uh, not the thistle, more like a dandelion, and it's got those little tiny, tiny hairs, will those resprout also? Not likely, not likely. The, uh, the ones that resprout on the tap-rooted plants like, um, <coughs> like dandelion and garlic mustard and whatever it would be, if you break off the end, like you break off the, the tip end of a carrot, that part can grow back. It takes a while to come back up again. But yeah. like we're just talking about with the power of photosynthesis, once it gets close enough to the surface, and it doesn't even have to be above the surface yet, once it gets close enough to the surface that light is coming down to it through the soil particles, it starts refeeding that root. Yeah, but um, whatever root was left has to have enough starch in it, to food in it to, to get it up there. Uh, to get it up and to those the fine hairs just don't have, no. don't have enough. Yeah, that's, so, that's what I was worried about when I was shaking off the dirt, let's say, and getting out the little worms that are in that clump if I would be giving myself some more now now if you okay. were take, taking out those little nasty bulbs where you're shaking soil and those little bulbs which bulbs will we try oh, to take star about like we're working on today yeah you know I I don't shake weeds anymore um if I do shake weeds I turn around and shake them over the lawn let the worms and stuff go back into the lawn Otherwise, I take all the weeds and uh, and I put them in a place where I can smother that. But I, I don't shake the so shake the soil off of weeds anymore, unless I've got mulch right behind me that I'm I'm mulching right afterwards. Because boy, when you shake that stuff off, years. every weed seed that's been buried in the soil for the last twenty years or longer ends up on top of the soil, and I just I don't want to see that. So I know what you mean. You just want to save all that stuff that's there. In fact, there was one, there was one woman that, that wrote to us um, who had a dog, she was a Labrador, wasn't it? Who would yeah. shake the weeds. She would weed and the dog and put the dog, put them on the lawn behind her and the dog would pick them up and shake them back and forth. <laughs> you learned that that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. Do deer like to eat Dutch clover, Kathy is wondering. And so what's the best lawn alternative? Um, I, if you're asking if deer like to eat Dutch clover and so you don't want to put that in the lawn because then the deer would just eat it. I'm not sure that that's the way that we would think. I would think that something that grows as well as Dutch clover that you can grow an entire half of a lawn of is a great thing to give deer to eat. Deer, rabbits, groundhogs. I don't, but I don't know. Um, I don't deer either. do browse grass. They definitely browse. Yeah, I mean, they browse on the edge of the road and they're eating something, but I've never watched exactly what it is that they're eating, so I don't know. Um, I kind of think that what rabbits like and groundhogs like, they would like too, but I don't know that. The best lawn alternative. The best lawn alternative is it green varies. mowed lawn. Yeah, it uh, it really depends on the, the what you're using the lawn for. Nothing stands up to to foot traffic like like, like lawn, lawn grass does. It's it was selected and it's been bred selectively in order to take foot traffic. Um, so if it's foot traffic, uh, if you've got a lot of foot traffic in the area, you know, stick with lawn. If it's in the shade. Violets, myrtle with stones for the paths that get the most wear would be a, a good one. But um, there's not, and in some places, who, oh shoot, who sent us the picture of the of their great moss lawn up by Midland? Karen, Kathy? Somebody did. Marie? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got it in my, in my notes so that we can go see it. I mean, a moss lawn is great, but you've got to have just the right conditions for that to grow. Sorry, but I can't ask everything uh, else. Kathy, you had had your hand up. Was that your question that Janet was just talking about? Or did yes, you have another question? No, that was my question. Thank you. Great. Great. Hey, you're you're uh, welcome. From Aubrey, where we've got a question about whether Virginia waterleaf is friend or foe. Virginia waterleaf is a native plant that um, likes part shade more than anything else. Um, and 
if you don't want a plant that spreads itself around um, real vigorously, then you probably, uh, probably don't want Virginia water leaf. And it doesn't have a particularly attractive flower on it. It's, it's got a flower, but it's not, it's not real showy. So if you're also looking for things that are showy flowers, you don't put it in there. But if you need something to fill space, um, in a, let's say in a, in a garden that's underneath um, maple trees where not a lot of things grow well, it can be a good thing to have there. But I usually tell people to take it out because it's not going to add significantly to their shady garden, but it is going to get itself, it's going to seed itself into every, every space it can fill. Michelle's wondering whether creeping thyme would keep out perennial weeds as a grass take alternative. It. Take so it, I can say, yeah, my, my woolly thyme is, uh, we, we use it in the garden, but I walk on it. It's actually on one of my, one of my paths through, uh, through a weeding route. Um, and in fact, it, it goes over a retaining wall that I have to kind of like hop in and out uh, across it. And it, it holds up just fine. And I have not seen a single weed come through. Even the hyacinth won't come through that, uh, um, that time. So in my experience, if it's happy time, yes, it will do the job. Um, but Janet, take it away. I, uh, let's see where, where did we put up a time. Time, time dive back. There, there we go. go. Uh, in fact, Sonia's talking about this time, right? Sonia, <laughs> this, this time. That, that one and the one along the retaining wall as well. But yes, yeah. Yeah. The, the time does just fine. <laughs> right. The way that time works to keep weeds out, um, and maybe some of the other times work even better than, than woolly time here, is that they're, they're actually shrubs. So that's all that's all twigs underneath there. They're soft twigs and they lay down flat against the ground, but they keep weeds from reaching the soil is what they do. Um, so as long as you keep stuff brushed off the top like maple seeds and, and whatever, they'll probably keep things from sprouting in there. But they won't stop things like, see the dandelion that's at the edge there? The woolly thyme didn't get there yet and that dandelion's gonna establish itself before the woolly thyme gets over there. It'll be interesting to watch the Cedum Angelina with the woolly thyme. Yeah, Sonia, who, who won over here? Cedum Angelina? Oh, oh, oh the, the, the thyme. Um, that, that picture is now, what, two years old? I had to rip back, um, I've ripped back a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. So the only control on the thyme right now is me. <laughs> it wins. Yeah, I think, I think it's about uh, four years old. We've got, uh, yeah, how time goes yeah. by. Yeah. Do I like thyme better than woolly thyme? I like woolly thyme best as a ground cover. Um, but at, as you, you'll see right here, let's see. Not, none of them are. And so here it is in a year when it didn't do well through the winter. And it happens every once in a while. It doesn't do well through the winter time. So in the spring, in uh, April, here it is with brown on it. And here's woolly thyme in, in California where in a year when it did that, doesn't matter whether it's zone seven or it's zone eight yeah. or it's zone five, it does it sometimes. And uh, so we've cut back what died back. Now it's gonna grow back in, like, but you have to sacrifice it. So here's where it, it had, woolly thyme had come out over the edge of the, of the uh, retaining wall, which is what Sonia and Cam wanted to have happen there. And it was brown and, and uh, I think we were discussing and Sonia said, well, we'll just cut out the dead. And I said, well, actually there's more dead than that. You have to look closely at it, but see that this is brown. Can you see the green back here? So the stuff that was in contact with the soil um, got more heat or whatever during whatever that cold anomaly was that killed this back. So it had to be cut all the way back so you can see the green. So there's a lot of dieback and you need to get the bad branches out. So I cut it all the way back like this. And it comes back that, that same year there. This is, this is it in, uh, so whenever it is that the coneflower is, is uh, heavily gone to seed, so yeah. September or so. September, yeah. yeah. Um, we have from Nancy, uh, from Nancy's iPad at least, <laughs> should I, Elijah Blue be cut back now to a couple of inches? Um, I usually cut back the blue fescues like Elijah Blue and, and the other Glaucas, the bluish fescue, fescues. I try not to cut them. They're one of the grasses that we don't cut all the way back hard to the ground because Sometimes if you don't leave any of the blue new stuff on them, they don't grow back. Some, sometimes you could just brush out the, yeah. the dead. Put on some of those gloves that have the latex on the fingers and then just comb through it and you can get the dead out. Um, but it, if, uh, if it doesn't look, because you can usually use, leave the blue fescues like Elijah Blue, you can usually just leave them and, and let them go. If they've gotten to where it looks like, man, I better cut this back dig it up and divide it. You're gonna to have to take a knife or something because it's a, a, a pretty dense crown, yes. but divide it into pieces because what's happened if it starts to look like that is it's getting too crowded on itself. 
what was that information about jump pages? <laughs> Sorry, I think I'll start back at the beginning here so we can let people know what's up. Let's see what time it is. Okay, yeah, there's time to go through this. So our usual for those people who are new and there may be people who here who have not been here at all. Yeah, I don't so know. let's our participants when I don't know our numbers. Uh, what what do we have here, Steven? We're at about hundred. Okay. okay, so so we have we have must have some new people because we don't usually at 25 after have that many. So we're getting get the getting the garden ready for spring starting at 8:30 and trying to make sure that people know to watch your microphone and your camera buttons to make sure that they're off mm -hmm. and to know where your chat button is and the raise your hand control. Um, so your your um, controls, there you go, Steve. Your controls should look like you see there. They should be slashed through both of them, unless you're uh, going to ask a question, in which case we want you to find your raise your hand control. But um, if you or open chat. your participants window, so if you look at your menu, you'll find participants down at the bottom. You'll find Sorry. participants down at the bottom. <laughs> and if you click on that, it should open a window that lists everybody who's there. Um, and what's important about that list is the bottom, it, it'll say raise hand. And if it doesn't say raise hand at the bottom of that window you just opened. Oh. <laughs> well, see. It'll say raise hand down in reactions or someplace at the bottom of your screen. But that's where you can where click that there. and we'll see you jump to the top of our participants list and we can let you um, open your microphone and we'll have only one microphone open at a time and not have all kinds of noise here. Um, also find your chat window. There'll be a chat button at the bottom of the at the bottom of your your menu that you can select or sometimes the chat is in a dot 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 more but open it up so that you can type in a question if you've got it can you dig peonies now as soon as you hit return that question will jump to the top where we can see it and where Sonia Nicola our co-host can see it and either line it up for the next time that we open the microphones or um, uh, quite often answer for you um, and there is an outline um, could you put me into chat, Steve, and we'll type it back in. Put me in. Oh, I just dropped it in. We're all set. We're in there. Okay. Um, there is an out uh, an outline, a note taking outline. It's two pages, and we'll we'll Oops. refer to that as we go along. But you can find in chat the link to to let you download that if you haven't already. So what we're doing right now is we're doing um, uh, questions as we can, and um, we want you to ignore where it says new jump. On just about every picture we've got is going to say new jump because today we're letting you drive where we go. We do have an outline. We, we are going to try to hit everything in the outline, but we'd rather go by what your questions are. And so we've arranged our outline that we can keep jumping back to a, to a, uh, um, a map that lets us click whichever certain point. points. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. ignore where it says new jump. That has nothing to do with garden material has everything to do with logistics of a, a presentation. Now, if we said new sip, some of you might be worried. New sip. <laughs> you know, I don't think we have a single picture from new yeah, sip It's been today. a while. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So it's your question day today. And uh, we'll, we'll start officially at 830, which is right now. Um, those seedlings, poor babies, <laughs> they've been cold, but they've been bright. It has been a gorgeous spring so far. I like it when spring is slow enough to let things stay to, in bloom for yeah. a while. 